So our goal here on the farm is to make sure that the land we are given is in equal or better care than when we got it. We believe that you know tillage and making those passes is slowly um, eroding the soil away. And so if we can do our part to keep the soil where it's at and hopefully build it back, I know it's a slow process, but that's our goal here. I'm Carrie Olson. Uh, we're in Holly, Minnesota. I farm here with my dad and my sister. We're fully no-till and we're experimenting with cover crops. Dad had an idea to try no-till, so he ended up trying it on some lighter ground on the soybeans and it worked. And so then he tried on some heavier ground and it worked and then made the transition with wheat and started seeding wheat. And I think he got his first no-till drill around that time too. It's an awesome learning experience because it opens your eyes a little bit more than our traditional uh, tillage farmers where everything's always the same. We work the ground in the spring, we spread it, we plant it, we spray it. Here we're not doing any tillage, so we have to apply our nutrients on some type of an application that does not involve the tillage piece. Tops of the hills have been eroding down in the bottom and they wanted to get more consistency across the field. And no-till is one of those processes that we can uh, implement into their operations to keep that erosion from happening. It basically helps hold that soil in place so we're not eroding that ground to the bottom and we're getting more consistent crops across the field versus just good crops in the bottom and bad crops on the top. A tillage farm usually broadcasts the fertilizer. Now on a no-till operation, it's always going down with that operation, whether it be the planting or the air seeding. So it, it makes it interesting to follow along with them because they're getting their total fertilizer package into two split applications. They're planting and they're side dressing. We're not tilling that soil every year or loosening it up every year. So our heavy equipment is running in one spot throughout the year and we try not to get across the rest of the ground so we can keep root structure moving through that soil efficiently. With our no-till system we have to be really careful with our compaction and um, how much we carry. So I only fill the grain cart probably half a truck full so we move a little bit more but then also whenever I'm moving I also make sure I move on where the combine or the drill or whatever the planter all of our stuff's on the same rows so we try to keep the compaction in the same areas. We've demoed them different products and, and we figure out kind of what they need. Um, spend time with both Carrie and Nicole in the cab too and we talk about the product a lot. We talk about what could be better. Wherever they need the help, we kind of take care of them as a whole. It's not just a specific piece. It's always just if the planner needs something done to it, we go out there and we set the planner, say it's section control timings or some type of a display issue, whatever it might be. So we always try to make sure that they're going as smooth as they possibly can be going. It makes it very unique to work with a farm that does that much no-till to try to pave the way to maybe introduce it to the next grower that sees them doing it to try to do something on their ground. So it was a long progression, but now we're fully no-till. And that's what no-till is. It's a long-term investment and you're hoping that your next generation understands and has that, that passion to, to stay with it. It's a good long-term solution to benefit ground.